The story is about a, a, a little town called Tenancingo, which uh, sat in the middle part of, of El Salvador, and it was several miles off the main Pan American Highway. And it was a it was a small militia outpost, a militia that was associated with a, were, were attached to a, a infantry division, which was in a larger town. So there were soldiers there, and there was a big outpost. I didn't know any of that. I'd never heard of Sin and Tenant Singo. But this was a Sunday, September 25, 1983. And there was a fairly big press corps in Salvador then. It was a big story, Central America. And then Sunday was a day everyone went to play. But I needed some B-roll for a, an analyst, an analysis I did, and I told the crew we're going to go out in the road. And they says, oh, Peter, no, no. I said, we're going to go out, guys. Yeah, as long as we're back in time to party. I don't blame them because we, we drove out. And as we were driving 20, 40 minutes or so, and we could see smoke on the horizon, we stopped the car and there was boom, boom, boom. Now, Salvador was a place where you didn't hear much bombing. You didn't see, you know, it was sort of a, a close quarter war, small arms. And then boom, boom, boom. So we drove along. We had a very good driver, Romeo. He says, oh, that's probably a tenant Singo, you know. And I said, what do you mean tenant Singo? Well, it's a small community up the road. The road to it is where we're approaching it. We got there. There's a roadblock and military. So Ro Romeo goes out and he's talking to the soldiers. It's a uh, small town. It's an outpost of military. It was overrun by the left-wing insurgents. And uh, we're uh, fighting to get it back. We've got units going in there. And I said, you've got units going in there and there's bombing? I said, we want to go through. Tell them, get them to take us through. And they said, but he, they said, no, but if you want to walk, they said, we don't care. So there was <clears throat> the driver and the sound man and the cameraman and then my producer girl in Yantsu also happened to be my girlfriend at the time and me and we start walking in five miles so about a mile in we there's these dozens of people walking out women and children carrying possessions and looking very distraught <clears throat> we went along further there's several wounded hobbling out or being carried and Romeo was talking to them and saying oh god they're blasting the town to pieces there's bodies all over the city there's no soldiers anywhere near. They're just using bombs and artillery. So as we get closer, a spotter plane comes over, and Romeo says, you better go, because they, they're looking down, and they're seeing you carrying this equipment. No, that's not military equipment. They don't know. They'll call an airstrike on it. So we scattered into the hill. Eventually, we get into the city, and there were bombs falling you know, around the place, and... These bodies, women and kids, scrawled along this main street. There's people cowering sort of in, 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 in stores and that and just hiding. And there were these rebels walking around with AKs and berets and, you know what I'm saying? Romeo, he says, I said, what are they saying? He says, no one's going to drive us out of here. We had a victory here. We killed all the militia and to hell with the bombing and we're staying so I said I want these guys on camera so they were talking about they were just young good looking guys and dressed like that <laughs> and so we wander around for an hour or two and uh, the military then started to approach and the word came that there was a uh, there were truckloads of troops on the path that we had come and so the guerrillas said goodbye and faded away. But they left behind a town that had been blown to pieces and a lot of people dead and a lot of soldiers dead. I mean, there was a post of about 80 men, so some of them had run, but most of them. So we said it's, it's, it's time to go. And as it was, a, a vehicle came in and with some local people who were coming in and we just got on it and drove out to the road and went into town. So we had this story. And I got, and we got to the hotel and 
our sound man, sound man who'd walk 10 miles and running around all day, Duncan Finch, he was our editor. And I said to Duncan, you know, uh, we've got to get this story done. And he said, I know, but it's such a wonderful story and I'm and I just going to take a long time and I'm so tired. I said, Duncan, we've got to get the story done. And I said, I'm going to write the script now. And a half an hour from now, I'm going to give you the script. You look through the video and see what you can do. So I wrote a story. And in fact, I started, I, I was hoping I had the script. But I said, OK, the opening line, the opening line of my story, death visited Tenant Singo on Sunday. It lingered all day in this remote Salvadoring town, snatching at children and women and men, and this was over bodies, women, kids on the street. That was the opening video. <laughs> so Duncan, Duncan worked all night. He was in the room. He had the video. He had my. I did the. I narrated the script. I went to bed at eleven o'clock. Got up at dawn, go into the room, and he's putting his laying the last video on this eight minute piece. And I had a look at it and I thought, this is phenomenal. It had all the drama. It had the soldiers coming and it had the rebels, you know, and the planes that were coming in, they, not good planes, but you know, the shots of planes coming in, helicopter and bombing, you know. And, and so I took it and I drove down to the International Airport in Salvador about a 40 minute, 30 minute drive and got it on a Taka Airways flight to Miami. And CNN first aired it at noon that day. But that would have been the 25th, I guess it was a Monday, and ran it a dozen times. My colleagues couldn't believe it. They started getting callbacks because I had told the staff, don't say anything. We haven't, we didn't get anything today. This is a secret. And the, those of us, they said, okay. So they started getting callbacks. And they're saying, what the hell is this? You know, the, the NBC, well, they, they're going crazy there. So we started showing the piece, and the room was crowded. <laughs> People were coming. It was a great piece. And anyway, the... I thought the story, as I say, it was the most dramatic I had done in my short career, TV career. And a critic in the Los Angeles Times Weekly wrote, quote, the footage was so startling that I was astonished it got on the air. Credit to the CNN desk. And I won a journalism prize for the story, my third Sigma Delta Guy Distinguished Service Award. And actually, that was the first major award the CNN had won. It was for that story. And what did that take? We walked. An editor walked all night. We sweated it out. I got in a vehicle and drove to the airport. And it was that kind of effort that was replicated all over the CNN landscape. It was only later that when we'd go into Baghdad in the mid-90s with, with 12 trucks and, you know, a whole truck full of vodka and all the rest. That was then. At this point in time, we had nothing. And I had a quote from Peter Jennings that I wanted to find, but I couldn't. But in, the, in 1985, in the major earthquake in Mexico City that killed 25,000 people, <clears throat> major story, well, CNN shared a satellite uplink with Peter Jennings and ABC. And I'd known Jennings for years off, and I wasn't particularly close, but I, I, I knew him. And at one point, when he saw us scrambling around, he said, you know, Peter, it reminds me of the early days of ABC. We did exactly the same thing. We didn't have any money. No one said we could go anywhere. And he talked like that, and I said, Peter, you want to switch jobs? <laughs>